The Speaker recognizes the Honorable Fred Deerhall. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To our Honorable Speaker of the House, to fellow colleagues and my friends, and even some enemies who might be in the uh, building, I stand here today with mixed emotions, and I'll try to give this farewell some perspective as I say goodbye to my colleagues and friends after a lifetime in the political arena and a short time in the legislature. This is not easy for me because public and government service has been such an essential portion of my life. As best I could, I tried to prepare myself for this eventuality knowing that I would not be comfortable saying so long to the people and the institution I care so much for. I knew when I took this job that this day would come due to term limits. And while I curse term limits and believe they should be abolished or at least modified, I would not be here today if it were not for them. What a dichotomy. You see, it took me 25 years and a successful federal lawsuit against a former governor to get elected here in 2002. I have served under three governors. I'm the only person standing in this House of Representatives who can say that. So I've seen Governor Engler, and I've seen Governor Granholm, and now I've seen Governor Snyder. And I don't know if I want to say if I'm a lucky guy for that or what, but history is history. And I want to just say that I spent just a very few t uh, productive months when I first was elected uh, in 2002. Uh, and then had to leave. So this is my second farewell speech, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and I will quote what my mom used to say, and that is that every goodbye isn't gone. But in this case, this final goodbye, I shall be gone. In the first time I, de I departed, I said that I would return. And just like General Douglas MacArthur, I did return. In 2008, the voters in my district overwhelmingly returned me to this house and did so for three consecutive terms. In so doing, I became the dean of this House of Representatives, which is a title of honor bestowed upon the senior ranking member of this body. I'm one of the last members of either chamber who has worked as a staff member and later as an elected representative. I've been in both the old and new systems as an employee and served in majority and minority status. I have served on many standing committees of this house and was appointed chair, vice chair, and minority vice chair. Most of my time has been spent on the appropriations committees and its subcommittees. I have had the distinction of serving as staff executive director, chair and vice chair of the Michigan Legislative Black Caucus, and as secretary of the Detroit Legislative Caucus. On staff, I've served as chief of staff to the late Senator Arthur Cartwright, and legislative assistant to the late representative and senator, Jackie Vaughn III. I've held positions on two of three branches of government, executive and legislative, and I've served on city, county, state, and federal divisions. As a legislator, I'm the proud author of several public acts and the co-sponsor of many, many more. The two most significant public acts I've been a part of were historic, the Amber Alert Acts, that helped notify the community in the case of lost children and seniors, and the recent Grand Bargain Acts, which helped to protect city worker pensions and helped to resolve the history-making bankruptcy of the city of Detroit. I want to thank this legislature for coming together like never before to confront and overcome personal and regional biases and for rising above the petty politics we sometimes engage in to become statesmen and stateswomen like we were elected to be. I want to thank the Speaker of the House for his efforts with regard to the city of Detroit bankruptcy. And I want to also thank my friend and who became a very good close friend of mine, Speaker Pro Tem John Walsh. I'll take the five dollars afterwards. But it took that coming together to make this thing happen. And I can tell you this, I have never been more proud of being a member of the House of Representatives and I did the day that we passed those bills. We stood and gave ourselves a standing ovation, something that has seldom happened in the history of this legislature. It was, to quote Winston Churchill, our finest hour. 
It is my fervent hope that you and your new colleagues will continue to cooperate and work in a bipartisan manner on the tough issues that the legislature confronts. Please seek to be mindful of your constitutional responsibility to be a separate and equal branch of government, beholding not to the executive or judicial branches, but to the people who elected you to office. I thank my family, of which I'm the oldest of 12 children, and my own six children who have put up with the tremendous incursions and sacrifices that public life can have on a family. I thank my staff who has supported my legislative activities, led by my best friend and chief of staff, Gary Pollard, who is sitting right there in the gallery, and who will remain with my son to assist him. Thanks to Josh Lyman, who is my current legislative assistant, for his great work in such a short period. I would not have been successful without my highly professional and competent staff. My thanks go to the House of Representatives staffs, both Democratic and Republican, who I've had the honor of working with, to House Clerks Gary Randall and Rich Brown, gentlemen of the highest order. I served with, with uh, Clerk Brown in the legislature, and the first person who swore me into office in 2002 was Clerk Gary Randall. They are gentlemen of the highest order and their staffs. I love them and appreciate them all. And I want to particularly call out Darlene Moore, who has been a friend and an advisor since my early staff and rep days. Thanks to the Legislative Service Bureau, House and Senate fiscal agencies, particularly Mary, Mary Ellen and Robin and Ben and Viola, Thanks to our outstanding sergeants at arms, led by Chief David Dixon, who is the historic first African American to hold this post. You have served us with the highest of professional standards and made me so proud. The Michigan State Police, I thank them and their executive protection unit, which has always been there for us. I also give special thanks to our interns on the floor who take special care of us. Special thanks go to my classmates who are term limited. We leave here knowing that we have endured. We are historic and we have done well. And I thank the Speaker of the House, Jace Bolger, and Majority Floor Leader, Rep. Jim Stamus, and Speaker Pro Tem, Rep. Jim John Walsh, for being as accommodating and cooperative as best you could. We've had some interesting times. I thank my Democratic leader, Representative Tim Grimel, who has been a good friend and confidant, whom I deeply respect. To my floor leader, David Rutledge, what a good friend and advisor. And to former floor leader, Rudy Hobbs, who I think has a very, very bright future. I wish him very well in the future. I thank my close associates, thank you. Reps Tom Stallworth, Woodrow Stanley, and my seatmate, Alberta Tinsley, to lobby. You have been my friends for many years coming to this legislature and will be lifelong amigos long after these days. To my backseat drivers in the row behind me, Representatives Townsend and Phelps and Smiley and Bruner, thanks for keeping your foot in my behind. Just kidding. And for always supporting me. To our Democratic Policy and Communications staffs, been there, done that with you, and enjoyed working with professionals for a change. To my friends and members of this honorable body on both sides of the aisle, know that we have seen many legislators come and go together. And today, I think of our deceased colleagues, former Representative Clarence Phillips, Representative Robert Jones, Mike Simpson, Herb Curl, Kate Ebley, Vera Rison, Judy Narat, and Gino Polidori, and all of the other members who have passed on before us, whom we've had the honor of, 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 of giving uh, our respect to uh, at the notice of their passing away. This is what led me 
to uh, put a bill in this House asking this House to pass legislation that would allow for a flag to be presented to the family at the time of the funeral. A state flag that cost $21, and in the last five years, it has costed this state, if we had done it, $921. And that is really something that I think that we should do for us to make sure that family members know of the importance of the members of the House of Representatives and the honor, the great honor that it is to have served in this chamber. I hope that all of my actions as a representative have honored their service, and I will never forget you all. Finally, the mixed emotions I feel are sadness at my departure from my dream job and career on the one hand, but I have tremendous joy and satisfaction knowing that my son Fred Durall III was elected to my seat and that he will be serving in the 98th legislature in January 2015. Every father wants to see his children succeed and have a good life. I'm so proud of him and thankful to the voters of this district for granting my wish to see him elected. He will serve with legacy, dignity, honor, and respect for this institution. Please welcome him with open arms and hearts. He will appreciate that. He just showed me a few moments ago that I'm not the representative anymore. He officially now has his state ID that says he's the legislature. So I guess when I get through here today, I'll pack up my little bags and move on out and let him take over. And that to me, ladies and gentlemen, is what we all work for. And that is for our folk of tomorrow to come in and become leaders and take over and carry on the ball. So I leave here with distinction and happiness and peace. I hope that history will be kind to me and that my years here will not be forgotten. I pray you all God's very best and hope you continue to realize that out of 10 million Michiganders, you 110 people are privileged, are privileged and are very special. I am so proud to have served with you all. The dean is gone. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, I move that these remarks be published in the journal. Thank you, God bless.